Hi guys, Mike here and today we're going to have a look at two of the best budget ultrabooks available in stores, the Lenovo IdeaPad U310 and the Sony Vaio T13. We're going to start by having a look at these two. Uh, you have here the graphite grey version of the Lenovo IdeaPad U310. This is also available in a bunch of different colors. While the Vio T13 is only available in this uh, brush uh, silver aluminum finishing. Uh, for the Lenovo you have aluminum on top and aluminum on the bottom while the interior is made from plastic. And uh, on the Vio the entire thing is made from aluminum. So that's a uh, probably why you could say that the Vio T looks and feels slightly better. However, there is one thing with both this, both of this. Uh, the screen cover tends to bend a little bit on either of those, which in time might have some unpleasant effects on the screen inside. Now, in terms of size, you will notice that uh, the two are pretty much the same with uh, the Lenovo just slightly longer and slightly wider while they both measure, measure about 0.7 inches in thickness. Uh, they're also pretty much the same in terms of weight, 3.5 pounds for the Vio, 3.7 pounds for the Lenovo which is uh, clearly more than uh, the average 13.3 inch Ultrabook weigh these days. Now if we have a, we're going to have a quick look at the ports we just have to put these two together and here's what you get. On the right side, on the Lenovo there is the headphone mi uh, microphone jack, a USB 2.0 port and the PSU. While on this one you have the headphone microphone jack, you also have a card reader, full size HDMI, VGA output and Ethernet. On the front you have the status LEDs on the Vio and you also have the status LEDs and a card reader on the Lenovo. While on this other side, on the Vio you have the PSU, the cooling grill and another two USB ports, actually the only two USB ports. While on this one you have a quick recovery button, a wider cooling grill, LAN adapter as well, HDMI and two USB ports. So as a difference on the Vio you have this, you have a VGA output, while on the Lenovo you actually get to one, uh, one extra USB port, which is actually something quite useful. Now if you, will, if you will have a look at the bottoms, you will notice that uh, there's one thing that sets the Vio apart. You can actually remove the battery and access the memory and hard drive, which is something you can't really do on regular Ultrabooks. And, uh, the idea pad is in that, uh, that class as well. Lifting the lids, you'll notice that both of these devices are actually quite good looking on the inside as well. However, the Vio does feel slightly more sturdier because this entire part is made from metal, it's aluminum, while on the Lenovo this is plastic. As well, the screen bezel on the Lenovo is made from glossy plastic with, uh, which uh, might scratch and catch fingerprints in time, while on the Sony is actually made once again from metal and feels rather good. In both cases the bezels are slightly thick and the screen is a 13.3 inch glossy uh, display, rather poor displays on both of these, the end panels, uh, 1366 by 768 pixels resolution, so overall uh, not that great viewing angles, not that great brightness and contrast, so definitely not uh, something you would expect from a premium ultrabook, but don't, ex don't forget that these are budget machines, so probably you were expecting some uh, some corners to to be cut to be cut with uh, with these devices. Now we should also have a look at the keyboards. Uh, both feature island keyboards. They look quite good on both of these machines. However, while uh, on the Sony the travel is uh, quite poor and the overall feedback isn't very good with this uh, with this keyboard. Uh, on the Lenovo the keyboard is definitely better. There is a little bit of extra flex which can be a bit annoying but the AccuType uh, layout is actually very good and uh, you will notice over here that um, 
there is one issue with this uh, as well you get an extra row of keys here on the right which uh, might uh, bother you until you get used to it because uh, with most keyboards or keyboards you only have an enter and a backspace here on the right however overall this is definitely better for typing uh, than the one on the sony t13 uh, one more thing neither of these keyboards is backlit so they're just average uh, keyboards you get on pretty much all the laptops these days as for the trackpads this is a glass trackpad on the Lenovo idea pad it's it's accurate feels good uh, supports plenty of multi-touch gestures and the integrated click buttons are fairly good as well while on the Sony you have a plastic trackpad once again it's good but uh, it's a lot smaller you can see that it's way more cramped than the one on the idea pad and um, integrates click button the click buttons as well so they pretty much are on the on par in terms of uh, in terms of click pads although you will like uh, the, the bigger click pad on the Lenovo idea pad a bit uh, a bit more in terms of hardware both these uh, laptops are built on Intel Ivory Bridge platforms and they can uh, be equipped with uh, Core i5 or Core i7 processors with uh, integrated graphics for gigabyte of RAM and uh, hybrid storage uh, this allows them to be pretty fast during average uh, daily use but uh, you will also be able to run uh, multimedia content as you can see here this is a full HD clip streamed uh, from YouTube you can run uh, full uh, 1080p content from your uh, device as well uh, you can use it to browse you can use it to edit texts and uh, they will also be able to use for some serious tasks like edit editing photos or videos the two laptops also tend to run quite cool during everyday use and uh, they're not going to get very hot not even when pushed when uh, running games or movies for hours uh, on the other hand uh, the sony will get a little bit more noisier than the lenovo but uh, in both cases uh, the speakers are actually loud enough to cover the the sound from the fans uh, speaking about uh, those uh, speakers uh, they are placed uh, inside be behind the, the behind the screen's hinges on the Lenovo and behind the keyboard on the Sony. Uh, they're decent. They offer decent audio quality, but like with uh, most uh, Ultrabook speakers uh, these days, they're not very punchy and uh, they're not actually very good. They're all right to watch uh, to watch a clip on uh, on YouTube or on uh, I don't know on Hulu, but uh, they're not really something an audiophile would uh, would enjoy. Both these laptops feature pretty similar batteries, 4 cell batteries with about 50 watt hour on the Lenovo and about 45 watt hour capacity on uh, the Sony. Uh, in real life, uh, this translates in about 4 to 4.5 four hours of life for daily, uh, daily average tasks like uh, browsing, watching clips, editing text, stuff like this with wireless on the screen at about 70% and balance mode, uh, balance mode on. These two laptops are actually budget uh, ultrabooks like I said in the beginning and uh, they are going for about $700, $800 right now. In fact the IdeaPad actually starts at $639, that's for an older generation Core i3 Sandy Bridge processor. While uh, for the Sony Vaio you no longer have the older Core i3 uh, CPU and you can only buy it with a Core i5 uh, Ivy Bridge uh, processor and that's uh, going to start at $770 while uh, a similarly equipped uh, Lenovo IdeaPad U310 will start at about $720 so that's about $50 cheaper than the Vio but uh, when compared to the average Ultrabook that uh, goes for $900 $100 both of these are actually quite affordable in the end, both the Lenovo IdeaPad U310 and the Sony Vaio T13 are budget ultrabooks and in order to meet their lower price points, the producers had to cut some corners with them. As a result, they are slightly heavier and bulkier than the average 13.3 inch ultrabook but could rather poor screens and subpar battery life. The Vaio T13 also has a rather bad keyboard while the Lenovo IdeaPad has some wireless issues. 
Still, if you do want an everyday thin and light computer and don't plan to spend close to a grand for it, these are for sure devices you must consider. More details about the two are available in the written comparison on Ultrabook Review, you're going to find a link towards that in the description below. That pretty much sums it up for today, I do hope you enjoyed this clip, so don't forget to share it and subscribe to our channel if you did. Until next time, Mike out!